All right, everybody, thank you so much for joining us today on um, the YouTube channel, uh, Root Cost Solutions for You. I am Fabiola, I am your host, and I am very, very delighted to have Bridget with me. Uh, she's a mold expert, and um, this interview was scheduled a while back, and I just couldn't wait for today. So I'm so excited to hear what she has to say. And uh, Bridget, thank you so much for being here with us. I'm going to let you introduce yourself. Yeah, thanks for having me. I uh, always love to talk about mold, <laughs> believe it or not. Uh, so I started my career as an acupuncturist. I, I, was, I wasn't starting as a sick person, as many people do with the health field. I just was interested in natural medicine and natural living. So I got into, uh, I decided to go the route of Chinese medicine. And then I started my career in Portland, Oregon, which, as you know, is a very wet place. And yeah. I ended up uh, being exposed to mold for a long time without knowing it. So, you know, as I was starting a family and starting my career, I was also really struggling with my own health and experimenting and learning a lot of things about nutrition and functional medicine, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't get all the way better. It would be very up and down. And then I got a lot worse, uh, and then finally discovered, uh, mold, so it definitely changed the course of my life and career. Uh, you know, we ended up spending a lot of money and selling that house and moving. And, um, and I just had, I learned so much about detox in the process that I just really wanted to change my career in that direction. So that's, that's all I do now uh, as an online practice in uh, mold and detox. Well, that's awesome. And, you know, like you, you touch on a very important point where um, I think people who, who suffer from mold toxicity sometimes don't even know that they are suffering from mold toxicity. And um, I was one of them. And so the more I learn about it, the more I'm like, oh, yeah, basement. Oh, yeah. You know, living in a wet environment like you like you mentioned. Um, so could you tell us about like what are some of the, the classic uh, or not so classic mold symptoms? Like what should someone be looking for that may, you know, kind of like turn the light bulb on and say, hey, I should probably look into this? Yeah, it's tough because there isn't one like smoking gun symptom um, mm -hmm. because it can affect any body system. That could be really a big array of symptoms. Like so in, in one family who's perhaps exposed, you know, you could have a child with breathing issues and another child with attention issues and another child with bedwetting and then one person's not affected seemingly and then another is exhausted so that adds to the mystery uh, i will say the two i would say the two most common symptoms over time you'll see are brain fog and fatigue probably followed by food sensitivities being really common uh, and i'd say the 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 thing that is a smoking gun is the environmental component, right? Mm -hmm. So it's symptom and plus you can test for mold in your, in your body if you like, and then testing where you're living or working. Sometimes it is an older exposure, like you mentioned, it was in your background. Uh, so sometimes it, you can't go back and test, but usually by the time you've learned about mold, you're like, oh, yeah, that now that I know <laughs> that was a situation. Yeah. Uh, but also, like, as you mentioned before we came on, like, sometimes you just don't know. Um, most mold in a home is behind a wall yeah. or in a crawl space or an attic. So it's not like you walk in and it's like, oh, I see mold everywhere. You know, mold is very small. It takes a lot of it to be <laughs> visible and it needs to be somewhere you can see it. Yeah. And then the, the mycotoxins it releases are invisible. So they can be coming through the wall, uh, wherever, circulating throughout the house. And you just don't know. So we there are examples of people who are like literally in multi-million dollar homes and they have mold. So it's just a... You know, it can be a construction error, uh, an issue with managing humidity, you know, roof leak, something not installed correctly. So there's just, you know, so many ways that 
our buildings. I mean, pretty much people say, oh, don't, are 50% of buildings affected by mold? If you think about the lifetime of a building, every single one is going to have water damage. Yeah. Really. Will it always lead to toxic mold that affects your health? No. But literally every single, unless you have a building with, I don't know, in the middle of the Sahara Desert with no plumbing, you're going to have water affecting it at some point. So if you think about it that way, it's really not so rare. Yeah. No, that totally makes sense. And, you know, sometimes um, I uh, I go on Trulia, right? And I'm like, just curious about houses. And, um, and I see all these different houses that are, uh, you know, for like super cheap, right? But they're all like, need a lot of renovations. And they show pictures. And you can see the mold on the mm. wall. Yeah. And I'm thinking, oh my gosh, you know, like here is somebody who's trying to get a house, uh, gets the house, doesn't really know anything there is to know about mold or very um, limited information about it. Buys a house, it doesn't really get addressed properly. And then you live there for the next whatever years. So it's, uh, it's super hidden. And ever since I've started learning more about mold, I'm like, oh, is this place, you know, like it makes me question, right? Where I work, where, I, where, where I have worked, where I live, where I have lived and stuff like that. So, um, are there any, uh, so you mentioned testing, is there any specific, um, home testing that you would recommend that we become familiar with? Yeah. So in, in this, at this stage, testing the body is way easier than testing the home. Yeah. You know, now we have a urinary test for mycotoxins. You can get through a practitioner, pretty straightforward. You know, not a lot of false negatives. The home is complex. There's a lot of rooms. You don't, you know, are you a renter? Are you an owner? What's your budget? Um, there can be multiple sources of moisture too. So sometimes... You know, I actually have someone in my mold group who bought a home that knew had had some remediation or some issue when they moved in. There was actually multiple location issues. So the home is trickier. Uh, if you are a renter, you may want to just do like a, some plate tests, a sticky plate test from a company called Immunolytics. That's the cheapest way. If you want to spend a little more money, you could do a dust test where you collect dust all right. around and send that in. It won't tell you where damage came from, but it will tell you the presence of mold mm -hmm. and mycotoxins. Uh, and then it, you know, if you own a home, inevitably, you know, if you have a problem, you're going to need an inspector because you need to know where it came from. It's like finding the root cause, right, in the body. Same yeah. thing, the home. You, could, you can't just say, oh, well, like, let's, you know let's vacuum and then we're good. Like you need to know where it came from. So that it, I stress to people, like it's a construction project, a remodeling project. People aren't excited about the amount of yeah. money they're going to have to spend. So they want it to not be that, but it, it is that. Yeah, no, that makes sense. I think, um, yeah, it's a, it's a huge monster, right? Because sometimes if, if you concentrate on um, addressing or mitigating the home, like you said, you can, you, you're going to need money, right? It's definitely thousands of dollars to do that. And sometimes uh, people just, like you said, they don't want to go through it. And who wants to move, right? Like you've been there forever yeah. and you're like, I'm not going to sell my house or um, so, which I definitely had had clients who are like, uh, I'm not moving. So I'm like, okay. It, so, yeah, it kind of boggles me. Although I was probably the same kind of resistant person at, at one time that people are so sick yeah. They're just dumping money into renovation and this and that. And it's like, why aren't you just moving? It's yeah. just a house. Like yeah. there's millions of them out there. So I think part of that attachment is just your brain on mold. And, you know, you're just not like at your best, frankly. That's true. Yeah. Especially if you're, you know, you're sick or, you know, like you're sometimes, uh, you know, in my experience, people who, who are, mold who ex are experiencing mold toxicity they have no energy and yeah. they can barely get get through their day and they're like well i still have to run a family especially we're talking about um uh, working women right who it's there's a lot of us out there now and uh and it's not feasible to just like hey yeah get up and move so um yeah. so tell us about like how, what's um 
some of this testing you were talking about um, to test the body, right? Because you can, um, a urine test, and does it test a lot of um, different species of mold, or how, how does that work? Yeah, so there are only about 12 species of toxic mold, um, so that's not that many, luckily. They do produce hundreds of different mycotoxins, so depending on the testing company, um, you know, they're, they're testing usually for mycotoxins, and the mycotoxins do come in categories, so even though there are hundreds, it's like, you know, this species is producing these types and this species is, so they sort of try to aggregate it so that you're covering all the bases, mm -hmm. basically. Um, what I find people get a little hung up on is what type they have. Mm. It doesn't really matter that much, <laughs> right? Any toxic mold, any mycotoxin is bad. Yeah. And they produce different mycotoxins depending on the time of year or the conditions or whatever. So that it's a very changing uh, number or result. So don't focus on that so much. Just focus this, is it a yes or a no? And then perhaps the load. You know, mm. people don't really sometimes know how to read their test results, which is why we do that with them. You know, there are people who are you know, a little over normal, you could still definitely be symptomatic. And then there are people who are, you know, off the chart, yeah. you know, 20 times above. Um, and both those people could be sick. But yeah, I, I think, I don't know, something about our, our modern minds, like we want to like, oh, I've got this, I got to get rid of this. It's not quite that just work on the whole big picture. Yeah, no, that makes sense. And when you are working with someone with um, mold toxicity, are there um, any specific protocols you, you follow? I mean, I realize everybody's different. So everybody's going to need something um, different as far as support and supplementation. But is there anything that you can tell us as to um, general, like what could someone benefit from if they find they have mold toxicity? Yeah, so... You know, just to quickly cover like the foundations, you know, really you do need to be in a, a mold free or, you know, low mold safe space to heal, right? So you can't really detox when you keep putting them back in. Uh, and then you need to make sure certain foundations are in place, like, you know, you're eating a nutritious diet, you're sleeping, you're pooping, right? Like, all the things you're <laughs> you're learning on this podcast, I'm sure. Yes. Uh, those are important foundations before you go into a detox, right? Like if you're if you're only sleeping three hours a night or pooping every three days, this is not the moment to now stir the pot with a detox. So these things really are important and prevent you from having bad reactions. So mm -hmm. let's say all those things are in place. Uh, you know what can you now add? I, I really love detox techniques. Those are mostly moving the lymph, but yeah. sometimes they're doing a few other things, supporting the immune system in other ways. Um, so I love sauna, dry brushing, Epsom salt baths, coffee enemas, using a rebounder, getting a lymphatic massage, getting a regular massage. Uh, there's a lot to do to move lymph, uh, and that helped me a lot when I was sick. Um, and then supplement wise, you know, there is, a, a, there are a lot of options. I would say foundations are, I've, I've just been kind of working my theory on all this recently. I would say I give everyone antioxidants, binders, and some gut support. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's awesome. Yeah. Cause, and you touch on something very, you know, unique, um, the, those drainage pathways, right? Uh, cause it's, it's, um, it's hard to believe how many people are not uh, pooping every yeah. day, right? Yeah. And I'm like, what do you mean it's been three days? And they're like, yeah, that's my normal. I'm like, right. that's not normal. <laughs> so, um, so, but you're right. So it's so, it's so um, interesting. Um, I'm one to be just like, just give it to me, whatever it is. If this is what I have, just give it to me without always sometimes thinking about like, well, what are the pretty steps to getting that done to get so that you can get the proper detoxification, right? And uh, so I'm so happy you mentioned about like really making sure that those 
drainage pathways are open um, before you even begin a, uh, a detox program. Um, no, that's awesome. Are there any uh, uh, areas in the body where mold may hang out more than others that in your experience? Mm, that's a good question. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, mold is mostly inhaled. Um, and so one place that it can go quickly, which is not good, is right through the brain yeah. and to the um, pituitary hypothalamus gland. Not good. Um, mycotoxins are very good at traveling because they're just small chemicals, so they can exist in a water solution or pass through fats. So unfortunately, the brain can be very affected. Uh, another area that's big is the gut. And this isn't be this isn't necessarily because so much mold is coming from food. Some mm -hmm. mold can come from food. Uh, it's just, again, another place like our body is processing and, you know, it's a moist environment with biofilms and mold spores can actually live in there. It's just wow. a moist environment. Uh, I don't want people to feel like, you know, this is, you're stuck with it or that it's like everybody. Um, but yeah, those, those places, but there've been a lot of studies about where else mold can, can be. And it's kind of shocking and sad. <laughs> and so yeah. the little alveoli of the lungs, they can just stay in there and that's not good. Uh, yeah. in the nasal cavity, I think they've even talked about it potentially like being in bone and like bone. I don't know if it's bone marrow. I can't remember. Yeah. Don't quote me on that. Yeah. I have a section in my book on like some of the research where, you know, mold can be, um, and it's pretty, pretty shocking. But I think what you need to worry about more is like the mycotoxins in circulation and, are you giving your liver enough support that it can neutralize them? And then are you, again, like pooping, peeing, like getting them to exit? Uh, so our body recycles bile, and that can mean that mycotoxins go back into circulation. And as we mentioned with constipation, people might think, oh, well, that's, that's no big deal if I haven't pooped. But things can start to reabsorb, right, when we have them pooped. So that's why the elimination piece is so important. And really, if you're detoxing, you you want to get to a point when you have more than one bowel movement a day. Yeah. No, that totally makes sense. And um, you know, I work with with with, with like some mostly women mm -hmm. and um, who also want to lose weight. And um, and I was wondering, you know, like what what the the uh, relationship or the the connection between weight loss resistance and mold because if it's like mold or mycotoxins are um having high affinity for different areas in the body which are responsible for weight loss uh, management like you mentioned right like the hypothalamus and the pituitary which are like super important glands when it comes to and i'm sure that affects the thyroid and how mm -hmm. it affects the liver so all of that, have you in your experience found a relation between um, weight loss resistance and, um, and mold toxicity or my and mycotoxins? Yeah, I mean, in a, in a bunch of different mechanisms, it can uh, affect weight. So yeah, right from the hypothalamus pituitary, it can, you know, affect our brain's ability, our body's ability to sense correct hormone levels and make the right hormones. Uh, right, make the right amount. Uh, it can inflame cell membranes where hormone receptors are so that hormones aren't getting in. Yeah. Um, it can, since it can affect the gut and the microbiome there, it can affect how toxins are eliminated, letting like estrogen recirculate. Mm -hmm. If we have too many toxins, we can just put them in fat cells, right? And then gain weight that way. Um, mycotoxins overwhelm the liver, which is another area we're supposed to process, um, out used hormones. And then what was the other thing I was going to say about, oh, some mycotoxins are estrogenic, so to speak, mm. like just like plastics and things are, you know, estrogen. So, um, there's a, and the thyroid, like you mentioned, is very sensitive to, um, mold toxicity. And since mold affects the gut, 
then you can develop autoimmune thyroid. So yeah, gaining weight quickly can be one symptom of mold. Again, it's not everyone. Like I didn't really gain weight on mold, except when I was most sick, I was so tired that I really couldn't exercise. And I was like craving carbs just to get my brain to work. So I gained some weight there. Um, now I'm like entering perimenopause, like in a big way. And now I'm like, I'm like, oh, here's my trigger. Um, but I didn't really get that big, um, you know, big hit of estrogen from mold, but some women do. I think it just depends on your, on your genotype and stuff. Yeah, no, that's awesome. And so that's why testing, and I'm sure, um, you would agree with this is so important, right? Cause it's, um, it's, it's test don't guess, right? And like you mentioned, not everyone is the same. We're all built differently. We're all going to be reacting differently. And if I understand correctly, um, our bodies truly are designed through uh, our immune system to fight off some of this small toxicity and this uh, mycotoxin toxicity. But I do feel like the, um, the chemical component and being exposed to so many chemicals nowadays, um, it's sort of kind of like, stumps right it, it kind of the the immune system where the immune system mm. may become sluggish or not as fast as uh, as, as a response as it is is meant to 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 do at fighting against um this this fungi and it's um um you know i call them mole farts you know when people i'm like think of mycotoxins as mole farts you know mold that's farting and you know you don't you don't want that in your body you don't want that in your house and um What's your what's your take on that as far as like how um, chemically oriented, unfortunately, we are nowadays and how that may suppress the immune system and potentially slow down someone's mold um, toxicity recovery? Yeah, I mean, mold, yeah, certainly mold is not the only factor we're dealing with in modern life. So, you know, unfortunately, usually by the time you get your mold diagnosis, there's you're going to get a bunch of other diagnoses either first or afterwards, right? Like now you have candida and you now you know you have heavy metals and parasites. And so, you know, these things all kind of enable each other. So, uh, yeah, I mean, having a, a low tox home for life, low tox diet for life is important for all of us. And it's important for the person trying to get over mold, um, because it, that goes back to that foundation, right? That's one of my like 10 foundations I say is like low tox living. So I, I'm fortunate in, in our practice that people generally come to us having those foundations in place. They're very knowledgeable, right? Because they went through all those stages like, just like I did. Like, how do I feel better? Yeah. Um, and they may not find the mold till a long time in. So that has made our lives a little easier. Um, but there's still so many choices. Like I'm really learning about water lately. Like I already have a house filter, but now I may switch to distilled water, probably something you've learned about too. So there, you know, you do have to kind of keep up with it, but some of it is simple. Like keeping your house clean, HEPA vacuum, wet dusting, changing your air AC vents, frankly, yeah. not being like a pack rat where you have a bunch of stuff and dust, you know, like doing some spring cleaning of, of what you own, I yeah. think is a lesson most of us multi people learn. Like we are like, oh, we don't own a lot of stuff anymore. It's just yeah. a place <laughs> that's just not needed, right? Yeah, no, it's true. And, you know, like it's, uh, well, I'm in up, uh, um, up central New York and um, it's it's that time where like winter stuff is now getting, you know, in, in bins in the basement and um, and spring or, you know, and summer uh, clothing are making it, you know, back upstairs and we always wash them, right? Good. And yeah. I'm like, let's just, because even though we do whatever we can do to mitigate our um, basement is still going to be an environment where, and everything is in plastic bags and uh, bins and everything, but um, that wasn't always the case. And I found myself being like, all right, this needs to be washed and, you know, learning the signs, right? Like when you smell that mildew, you're like, Hey, you know, what's, what's the deal with that? And starting to question about that. Um, 
So yeah. something you mentioned when clients come to you, you're they're already very, you know, educated. And um, I think that nowadays more people are looking for solutions. Because like you said, they've looked everywhere, they haven't found solutions, they're reading books, they're listening to podcasts, they're finding experts like yourself and who have, you know, a similar, potentially a similar story like them. And uh, do you find that people are becoming also like more driven about their health and really wanting to make a change because no one else has listened to them? Or because I feel like mold is what man, many years ago was like, it's all in your head, you know, like just get over it. Um, you're tired, just, you know, get over it. Uh, whereas now it's even more acknowledged. Mold is an actual illness. And um, we have the test to prove it now and the studies to prove it now. And uh, so what's your, uh, when clients come to you, uh, what, um, yeah, you feel like there's more motivation about addressing their health? That's a good question. I mean, I, I feel like it's becoming more mainstreamed and more awareness. Mm -hmm. But if you, you know, and when you're working like you and I and with people, you're like, oh, everyone's interested. But, you know, I'm just like looking out the window at my street. And if I, you know, could say how many people are eating well, exercising well, filtering their walk, you know, it's still the minority. You know, and do those people feel well? Not, not necessarily, right? Look at, you know, all the health ep epidemics going on. It's just some people aren't looking for answers in the right place. Or like you said, just are like, well, I'm getting older, so I'm supposed to be tired and gaining weight. Yeah. Uh, you know, I was asked on uh, one, I think Evan Brand's podcast, he was like, how do you convince people that mold is real. And I'm like, mm, I just don't like, if you want to come to me, it's fantastic. I'm not going to do the work to go out and find you. And frankly, I don't need to, because if someone is sick and curious yeah. and not finding answers elsewhere, you know, they'll get to me eventually if they keep looking. And since that was my own health journey, I just encourage people to do that. Like, yeah. you know, I went through years of not knowing and it sucked, you know, and I could have, I guess, accepted this is my life, but I sure didn't want to, you know? Yeah. So you do have to keep seeking answers. And yes, sometimes you spend money on a dead end or whatever. That's just sort of part of the process. And sure. I can tell you from where I was at my sickest to where I am now is a world of difference. So I am very glad that, you know, and I, I can actually thank my ex-husband for this because I was one of those ones like with a foggy brain and was like, Ugh, I don't want to test for mold. I don't want to move like, you know, and he was like, I mean, we're doing this and we got to do this. And like, I'm, I'm very fortunate that I had that because that doesn't happen in a lot of homes and couples. I, I'm very grateful. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, I definitely lived the inconvenience of this story, but it's so worthwhile to do it. Um, you know, my future, uh, somebody asked me on another podcast, where do you think you'd be if you didn't find mold? And I almost started crying. Like, I think I might be dead. Like that's how sick I was getting. Wow. Uh, and I had like suicidal thoughts because I was just so exhausted that I just didn't want to have to wake up and keep doing it. And it wasn't like a, a conscious thought. It was just, this is how I know the mold in the body, you know, it tricks you because I, it wasn't like I didn't, you know, value my life. I just was so tired yeah. that I just wanted some relief. And it, it was almost just like this weird subconscious question like, oh, wouldn't it be nice if we could just not wake up tomorrow? Like, yeah. I would never think something like that now. But um, yeah. so, yeah, I kind of went on a little tangent there to just to encourage people to, yes, keep exploring, keep trying. If you're not feeling how you want to feel and you're going the wrong direction, which was what I was doing, yeah. um, you've got to turn that around. Yeah. Be curious enough, right? And, and be like, yeah. um, Hey, there's something going on. If you're working already with a practitioner, um, hey, I'm this this treatment or this protocol or whatever, it's not working. I'm not feeling 
um, any better. And it's just so interesting how mold definitely just, um, and I think as, as holistic practitioners and people who, you know, we're, have experienced, um, you know, something like we've gone through and are on a mission now about educating others and bringing that awareness um, as you do the protocols and do and remove the bad diet, remove the bad uh, lifestyles and have the, um, good and pro survival um, and sustainable routines, you remove that thing that it is not you. And then you start mm. to recover yourself or regain yourself versus from before when the toxicity was present. Wow. Uh, I right? love that. So, and and it's, yeah. I, I put that into perspective with clients and I'm like, listen, it's not about changing you or if I'm asking you to do something, it's not about that. It's about removing that thing that it is not you. And they're like, oh. Okay. That, I, that is really, well, I'm going to have to use that with the information because it's a great point. And even to come, you know, my just example of like the thoughts going through my head, um, it wasn't, it wasn't really me. Uh, it's yeah. almost like you think about a toxic relationship, right? Like you see fraud TV with celebrities. It's like, whoa, you know, you're just sucked into a pattern where you just, you was can't you you know you later you won't even believe your own choices so yeah. uh yeah that's that's really well said yeah and then it also like it empowers you right because it's having that support system so i think um having practitioners uh, like yourself you know you wrote a book you're in the trenches you're uh are walking the walk i walk the walk and so i, I don't ask someone hey do this if i haven't done it myself it, it's part of that and um you know, often I get asked, well, how long, how long before I get better? And that's such a tough question to, to answer, right? Because one, I think it depends on the degree of toxicity, um, how long you, a person has been, or are they living in a toxic environment? Uh, not just mold, but, you know, relationships and all that stuff, I think plays a huge role. And uh, without putting you on the spot and your experience, what, what would you say, you know, um, taking into consideration that people, everybody's different, it's sort of like the average or um, cases that you have worked with from the simplest. Yeah, list. <laughs> that's a great question. Uh, I remember asking that question to someone while I was going through mold. And I think she told me like three to six months. So I was like, okay, no, <laughs> You are lucky if you move into a place, you find mold quickly, you respond quickly, and then you can maybe have three to six months, maybe. Um, so if you're in a home for like eight years, like I was, plus who knows if I had other exposures before that, I mean, you know, I'm almost going to give a rough one and I'll, I'll, I'll give more background, but, you know, almost take how long you're exposed and cut it in half. And maybe that's how long. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. yeah. I'm reading a book uh, called uh, Toxic by uh, Dr. Neil Nathan, which I'm totally loving. And uh, he's he's so knowledgeable, right? And he's so great about not using too much technical uh, words. Or if he does, he gives you a warning about it. Uh, but he talks about how it can take uh, years, right? And yeah. all the different factors that can play on it. But, um, and I think about, you know, it's about honesty with clients and it's about honesty as a practitioner and people, because he's been willing to stick with the program long enough to achieve those maximum results and be willing to do the things that um, a practitioner may be recommending. And um, I know I had to, I didn't always like it, but I was like, okay, I do want to get better. So um, here I am taking my supplements and yeah. changing my lifestyle. Um, so no, that's, that's so awesome. Um, well, I want to say one thing about that too. It's not like the whole time you're the same amount of sick, right? Mm -hmm. You're getting better and better and better. And then there's some ups and downs and better and better. So, yeah. you know, it's going towards better all the time, right? Yeah. There, there can be some big, big wins just if you get out of your moldy home, or, you know, just you start a protocol that, you, you know, you get your first, you buy a sauna, like big, big wins, you know? Yeah. So, uh, it, and it can be frustrating once you've come 
down the road and you're like, oh, but why do I sell this or that? It takes a long time for cells to turn over and make healthier cells. And, um, you know, systems have been really damaged. So yeah. maybe now you're not really detoxing anymore, but you are trying to bring your white blood cell count up and bring your hormone production up and fix your gut. So there's these later stages, which is really where people like uh, you and me are specialized. Because to me, like that's, you know, all this that we talked about is, is a lot, but that later stage of like, oh, but why am I still, why can't I lose these 20 pounds? Like that's yeah. the stuff that is more nuanced. Yeah. Yeah, no, that totally makes sense. So um, could you tell us a little bit about your book? You've mentioned you wrote a book a couple of times. So I'm, I'm curious about it. Yeah, I well, I have to send it to you if you don't have it. It's this guy. <laughs> so it's that. a very like practical guide to mold. If you can't see, it's called the Ultimate Toxic Mold Recovery Guide. It's on Amazon as an audio book, paper book, and a Kindle book. And it's really, you know, a, just a bigger version of everything we talked about today. What is mold, symptoms, how to test your home, you know, the foundations, starting your detoxing, and then like what symptoms and problems are you left with later on in it, you know, how to get back to life without doing too much. So, you know, I, I really took it as a practitioner and also someone who went through it. And now I've interviewed a lot of people too about mold. So um, there isn't much of any topic that isn't covered <laughs> in there. So it's good to have as you go through the various stages. That's awesome. Thank you. Yeah. So we'll make sure to uh, add the adequate links so people can um, can grab their copy and, um, and, and start learning about it because that's where it begins, right? It's either you listen to a podcast, you either watch the video or you read a book and you're like, huh, it just gets your brain thinking. And um, in this about, like I said earlier, that curious mind to start connecting those dots and realizing that it, you don't have to live with illness, that that can definitely be addressed as long as you have um, that support, um, the correct support system in, in your corner to be able to, to get better. Um, so before we leave, uh, is there any... Um, client testimonial um, that you would like to share with us from someone you've worked in the past um, from having worked with them? Mm. Let's see. Um, well, I, I guess one client is coming to mind who moved back to her family's farmhouse or, you know, childhood mm -hmm. home moldy, <laughs> ended up literally bedridden in her 40s, you know, had very, became very environmental sensitive, like moving from place to place, no places were really fitting her. Um, you know, I was just corresponding with her and she's doing great. Like she, she's she been f consulting and like flying to clients to see them. She does find what she, why she mentioned it was like, um, if she, she can still get exposed to mold and it still affects her, like she can't be in certain yeah. old buildings. Um, but just the fact that, you know, she's flying around the country <laughs> working as an expert yeah. is a big change. Right. So, uh, you know, I love how you said, you know, getting, removing the thing, getting back to yourself. I think what's really touching as I interview different clients or meet clients, uh, is, you know, what they give back and how they show up afterwards. And a lot of them actually go into like different health or mold advocacy type things, which is phenomenal. I mean, it, it's such a huge thing that, you know, most of us do want to, you know, give back after we've been through it. So, yeah. Um, yeah, I think that's the thing as, as practitioners that you probably love to see too, is like, Every individual on this planet has something to give, has something special about them. Yeah. And when they can get back to that, whether it's being a great mom or, you know, being a vet or whatever it is, um, it's just so nice to see that they can come back to giving that to the world. Yeah, that's awesome. That's awesome. So I'm sure. Yeah, no, that's so great. And like you said, that's I feel like that's my real pay. 
you know, when, when I get mm. a text or when I get an email in saying, Hey, I, I went outside today and I, I could be out there for a couple hours. I ran errands. Um, cause I do think a lot of people with mold toxicity, they're just like have no energy. And when they mm. are able to get through a day with, you know, without feeling that they're dying, that's, that's a good day. I'm like, yes, we're doing this. Keep do, keep doing what you're doing. Um, yeah. So if someone wanted to uh, work with you um, on their journey, their health journey, addressing their mold toxicity, how would they go about uh, finding you? Yeah, we, we have a, my, one website is just my name, BridgetDanner.com, and we have a bunch of freebies. If you're like curious about mold, but you're like, mm, I'm not sure, you can just get like a freebie about you know, what is mold, right? You know, it's always step by step, right? So just being curious at first, learning a little more. Um, you can also schedule testing or consultations with us. And then we sell different supplements for detoxification in the gut. Um, so we're just trying to be a resource to meet you where you're at. We find that you know many people have already tried a lot, learned a lot. So we don't, so to speak, force you into like a big expensive program with us. Like you can just drop in for a case review or, Hey, can you look at this lab I ran? Uh, and I, I think people really like that. Yeah. So they're not, you know, forced into spending a huge chunk of money yet again. That's awesome. Yeah. So we'll make sure to include that information as well. Uh, cause there might be, you know, people who watch this video listeners, um, once we get it on the podcast, if they're, they're like, Hey, that's me. I'm curious. Let's make a consultation and then start their whole journey. You'll never know when you're going to change um, someone's life. That's awesome. Well, I really want to thank you today for spending um, some, you know, some of your time with us and educating us about the amazing things that you, that you are doing. And I, as a fellow practitioner, I really want to thank you for being out there for people who um, are in need of help and, um, yeah, I really, like I said, I can't thank you enough for, for being here with us today. Yeah, it was great. I'm so glad we were able to make, meet through the internet. <laughs> I know. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> awesome. All right. Well, thank you so much, Bridget. Until uh, next time.